Hello and welcome back to Banner Page and our Iron Man challenge. So as you can see right here, I decided to start on the balance sheet just so you can see exactly what is going on with my current land holdings. And you can see here that I have actually gone a little bit, well, maybe crazy. Mm, that's up to you to decide if it's too crazy or not. But anyway, I have literally purchased all of the land in Suno. And uh, I was able to do that literally just from all of our weekly wages and our tariffs. You've seen how profitable Suno actually is at the moment because the prosperity in the town is at a rich slash very rich level. So anytime it is at that level, you're going to be getting a good amount of cash every single time. And obviously, because I already had land in Suno as well, I am still able to gain a pretty significant stipend from that too, as well as, of course, our salt mine. And that's literally all I have been doing. <laughs> Believe it or not, I have literally just been taking money from the tariffs and rents, reinvesting it in land, and then the other things that I've been doing, basically taking every single spare little bit of money and recruiting elite units. That's literally it, because uh, as you can see, there's no elites to actually... Uh, recruit just yet. I have 4,700 as you can see. I have no one in my army at the moment with the exception of my companions because of course I'm trying to try and, you know, I'm very trying to reduce the amount of, uh, the amount of morale damage that we're currently facing. And you can see here that my Merchant's Guild has actually been completed. My Merchant's Guild was complete about Mm, two in-game weeks ago, I'm pretty sure. And what that does is that basically adds prosperity to your town and that's exactly what I wanted to do here because I wanted to pile on the amount of profit that I would otherwise be able to gain. Oh yeah, and I also bought an ironworks at Suno as well as you can see right there. The ironworks is only 3500 and I thought, yeah, you know, might as well just go for it. Uh, the weavery and dye works was a negative profit, so of course that's not going to be too useful. The only other thing that was quite useful was a tannery, but I didn't have enough money for that at the mo at the time and I wanted to actually uh, save my money in the treasury for investing into land. So I decided to go for the ironworks instead. Anyway, there's the salt mine, as you can see right there. And, uh, oh yeah, we've got some more elites coming up. Okay, so you can see here, I actually have 127 Vegeus skirmishers. Not entirely sure how I got all of those. Uh, it must have been from all the, uh, all the patrols that I've been uh, recruiting and things like that. Haven't sent out any other recruiters or anything, so I guess it is literally just from our patrols and things. But... On the other hand, I have 118, actually 130 Varangian Guards, because you can see here there's actually two different kinds of Varangian Guards. There's mercenary Varangian Guards, and then there are elite recruits that you get from being a uh, an owner of a town uh, when you're a member of the Vegeers Kingdom. So I technically have 130 of those guys, and I can literally just stomp over, well, most people, I, I suppose I could say, most people. But... There's one thing that I want to show you as well, just before we move on. I am actually now building a university, and a university will increase the relation as well as something else. I can't remember what the other thing it does, but it will increase the relation with the town. And speaking of that, I wanted to try and increase the relation with the town for no other reason, just because I can and because it's actually very cheap. So you can see here it's only a 1,000, and it actually increases the relation of the town by five, which is really good, because uh, usually it's uh, plus one, I think, and I think that that's kind of annoying to deal with, but uh, it's really cool that Banner Page has it at, at a plus five, so it's very easy to get those things leveled up, and you can see here, look at that, my land, 10,000. I actually did buy some uncultivated land as well. I don't actually think that really does anything, to be honest, uh, or maybe it does. Maybe it actually increases the amount of land that you can actually buy. So I think I might actually do that. Let's let's buy another four, four acres. And you can see here it's ex extremely expensive actually right now. And I think the land is extremely expensive because it is a very rich town at the moment. It's just got a huge, huge amount of economic power currently happening. And I should probably also go and speak to our patrol guy. Ah, no, never mind. Okay, I, I did get a patrol very recently. So what we're going to do, I am at very high morale. I think I actually just want to go into the tavern real quick. Just wanted to catch you up with everything that has been going on with my uh, economy. And uh, oh, I actually can't get morale now because I actually wanted to. Ah, never mind. I bought drinks for everyone else except for my men. So they're not going to be very pleased about that. But anyway, so 
I just wanted to catch you up on the various uh, economic standings. And now what I want to do is I want to show you something else. I want to show you what the Kingdom of Veggie has has been able to accomplish without me doing anything. I literally was just standing here waiting for some time at Suno, raking in the money, and this is what they've done. So they have taken Dirim, Rindyar Castle, and Ahun Castle. And that is all without me. I, I literally have to stress that. They also took Durchil's Castle because obviously we did weaken that quite a bit, and they decided to uh, pounce on that as soon as they could. So the Swadians are looking really, really weak right now. And uh, here's the thing. Kelrodan Castle was taken. You saw that at the end of the previous episode. I was uh, frantically trying to get people from Kelrodan Castle's garrison into Suno's garrison. Didn't really work out too well. I only got another couple of units out of there before I basically couldn't anymore because they were wanting to attack me all the time and it was just very difficult to avoid them. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to leave it. And I lost about 60 or so units. And that's not really... Eh, it's not really too bad. Not really too bad. But anyway, what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to attempt, if I can, to take Praven. And this is going to be quite important for us. If we can make this happen, this is going to be really, really important. I'm actually going to put Yamira and Jeremus to the bottom of the list because they are both our medics. And we want them to survive as best as they can. So what we're going to do is... Okay, we might not go in there. <laughs> uh, what about Uxkarl? Should I try and take Uxkarl instead? I know that Praven, I think, is a ladder, a ladder town. So it would be really easy for us to take that. Or much easier, shall we say, to take it. And I'm a bit uh, dubious about Uxkarl itself. Okay, so this might be a little bit easier. Let's have a look. Yeah, it is actually a ladder town as well. So let's try it. Let's try and take Uxkar. And here's the thing. If, well, if, and this is a big if, if uh, Prince Yaroglek does not decide to give us ownership over Uxkar, then we're probably going to be leaving the Vegiers. And I, I know that this might seem like a pretty, I mean, I know a couple of people actually mentioned and maybe even suggested doing that in the previous episode. The problem with it is that the Vegiers right now are quite, they're quite strong, you know, they're quite strong. So if I don't have a plan lined up afterwards, so for example, if I don't have a huge garrison available or I don't have, you know, some backup in some way, then it's going to be kind of difficult. Oh, and the defenders are actually sallying out. This is going to be quite harsh for us. Okay, so we do have all Varangian guards, so maybe it's not going to be as bad as I anticipate. Anyway, I do have my my wonderful throwing weapons right here. I uh, actually should have taken my grenades. My grenades would have helped out quite. A why are they throwing? Why are they throwing recruits and and random <laughs> random militia at us? This is actually kind of hilarious. I don't know why they're doing that, but okay. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of happy with this. That is absolutely fine. If they want to do that, then that is their prerogative. Nice headshot. Yes. There we go. All right. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful here. Can I actually get through by jumping, maybe? Oh, I can't? Okay. So, yeah, there is actually a bottleneck situation going on here. Usually, you're able to jump over these things. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. I actually got through. So we might have a, an easier time of things here. And I don't know why I'm blocking against ranged projectiles. That's not going to really work. Not unless you're some kind of Jedi. But anyway, we're not, quite clearly. Anyway, let's see if I can maybe do something here. Just try and take them out. You know, we don't really want to knock them unconscious either. We're just hoping that we will be able to eliminate them so incredibly fast. And, well, furious. <laughs> yes, yes. No cars in this, that's for sure. No cars in this. But who knows? Maybe in Bannerlord. Maybe they'll maybe they'll add some cars. No, I'm joking, obviously. Anyway, excited for Bannerlord, are you? Are you? Are you excited for it? Because it's coming. It's coming very, very soon, in actual fact. And uh, I no doubt they are working furiously to optimize it as best as they can for the release. Because, of course, you know, this is a big moment. An absolutely huge moment. For everyone, really, oh, but uh, for the most part, the developers, of course, because they have been working on it extremely, uh, extremely much over the past. Well, how 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 many years is it now? Since uh, yeah, ten years actually. Yes, it, it is actually ten years because uh, Warband came out in 2010, 
I didn't start playing it until 2012. And uh, yeah, it just, it's just, it boggles the mind how, how much time it took. But obviously they had to, uh, they had to design their very own engine because they wanted to make an engine that was capable of fielding huge amounts of units without sacrificing too much on performance. Because of course you gotta have, you know, if you have 500 units on the battlefield or something like that, you want it to run as smoothly as possible. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what they've been doing. They've been making their own custom engine. And uh, apart from that, obviously designing everything from scratch once again. And uh, I just, I can't imagine how much work that must have taken. But it is going to be a lot of fun to actually try it out, especially the single player campaign, because I obviously had uh, no opportunity to play the single, single player campaign unfortunately, but uh, it's going to be really, really fun to get my hands on it eventually, uh, or should I, say, should I say finally, and I'm sure that uh, many of you as well will probably be deciding whether or not you want to pick it up too, and uh, well, if you do, well, play alongside me, you know, play alongside me, it's going to be a lot of fun to see exactly what everyone decides, and we, it's going to be, it's going to be a very eye-opening experience to see exactly how people decide to play and I'm talking about like weapon selection faction selection armor selection you know all the all this kind of thing and you know usually that kind of thing is not exactly important especially in warband yeah you know you can use basically any armor you want you can use any weapon you want and yeah that's the same in battle lord 2 but it's going to be interesting to see which weapons come out on top in terms of most efficient or most damaging or uh you know, speediest or whatever the whatever the case may be. And I'm wondering, they do have a crafting system, don't they? As far as I'm aware, they they did actually include a crafting system in the new game, and that's going to be extremely fun to uh, to tinker with. And I'm a bit worried about getting shot in the face right here. So uh, should I should I actually retreat? I I might actually retreat. Can I do that? Because I'm a I'm a bit. Oh no! Hello, hello. Yes, come on, Varangian guards. Come on, help me. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was a bit worried there for a second. Did you see that? Yeah, I was a bit worried. I literally thought to myself, hmm, I should probably get get myself out of here. But uh, it seems like we might actually achieve some kind of victory, which would be amazing. So, oh, there we go. Nice shield bash. Take him down. And come on, come on, come on, Vrangian guard. Come on, Vrangian guard. You want, to, you want to murder him. Yes, you do. Very nice. Good work. Good work, sir. All right, so we have eliminated 169 so far. We've lost 42. This is not the secret to life in this case. It is rather uh, devastating amounts of losses we're suffering right now. And I really wish I had grenades. I should have taken some grenades, you know? Should have definitely taken some grenades, but we're doing all right. You know, we're doing all right without them. But bear in mind that I only have about another 40 units to throw at the opponent, and I don't think I'm going to have enough to be able to see through the end of this siege. Can I pick up that axe? Hmm. I can't pick up that axe. Oh, do you see? Do you see the amount of throwing axes on the wall right there? That is hilarious. My goodness, that is just insanity. Wow. Okay. Ah, oh, there we go. Hello. Yes, give me all these throwing axes. These throwing axes are so fun to use. They really are. Okay, let's do this. Okay, no, let's do this. Uh, there we go, 37 damage. Yeah, these guys do have relatively good armor, so it is very, very difficult to uh, deal damage to them in a good fashion. Oh, that guy's got an axe embedded in his, in his shoulder. Oh, take that, take that, yes. Oh, it seems like we are now finally able to penetrate their defenses, and I think we will be able to achieve a victory here. I just hope that Yamira and Jeremus have not been spawned in. If they have been spawned in, then it's more than likely that they have already gotten themselves eliminated, and as a result, our first aid skill will not activate, which is going to be bad, because in a town situation, you're going to have to go into the streets and uh, see what you can do about, you know, all that stuff. So, yeah, that might be a bit problematic. Yes, a bit problematic. Okay, so I'm just going to try and murder these guys as best I can. Oh, yeah, oh, he's fallen. He's fallen. Oh, yeah, he's free, fallen. Yeah, he is. That is for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to be a bit careful here. I do not have confidence in my shield skill as it is. Because my shield skill at the moment is 5. Yeah, I would prefer to get it a little bit higher. Oh, yeah, by the way, my power throw skill is 10 now. 
and uh, there's a reason for that. There was a guy in the tavern at Suno, and he offered to train my archery or my thrown weapon proficiencies. And, I, and well, not thrown weapon proficiencies specifically, but you know, to increase my power throw skill. And that is exactly what he did. He increased my power throw skill by one, and so I have 10 now. And it only cost me 5,000. It only cost me 5,000. I don't know whether it would have given me more benefit if I had less power throw skill. So, for example, if I had eight or seven, would it have given me three points or two points or something like that? I don't know. I don't know about that. So, you know, uh, I, I only know that it gave me plus one. So maybe it is a... Maybe it is a feature that gives you just a, you know, a, a skill point here or there, which I think is actually very cool because now what it means is that I can basically leave my strength where it is and I don't necessarily have to level it up any further if I don't want to because my power throw skill is already 10 and I could... Oh, Jeremy's got himself taken out. That's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, anyway, so my power throw skill is already 10 and my iron flesh is 9, I think. And I could also increase my power strike, but it's not really, in my opinion, not really necessary, at least at the moment, I don't think. And yeah, so, you know, I think that saved us three stat points, which is actually really cool, because I was wanting to get 10 power throw. And I thought, hey, you know what, let's, uh, let's try and do that. But, so, you know, sacrificing three stat points to be able to get to 30 strength. That's another three levels, you know. I don't know whether I have the experience to, to waste or to burn on that. So... It's very nice that we were able to do that. All right, so there you go. That's actually a victory for us. And Duke Delinard is here. And we will be taking him prisoner. Thank you very much. And everyone is liking the fact that I took this guy prisoner, amusingly enough, apart from the Saranids. Because they are, I think, in, a, in an alliance with, uh, with them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to operate under the assumption that I will be getting ownership over the town. I will I will say that Yaroglek will be a uh, forthright fellow and he will try to uh, he will try to give me this if at all possible. If he doesn't decide to give me this, that I I think I can actually take all of this. But yeah, if he doesn't decide to give me this, then we are going to be defecting and we will go somewhere else. And uh, I think we'll probably go and join the Nords because it will be a lot of fun to try and use their elite units a little bit. I think that could be a lot of fun. Absolutely a lot of fun. So, ah, uh, nice, nice boots right there. Very nice. And uh, yeah, we got some uh, torso piece. Yeah, it's not really, not really necessary for us. And I'm going to be asking that Axkal be awarded to us. And uh, I'm actually going to manage the garrison here as well. Because as I said, I'm going to operate under the assumption that I will get it. But if I don't, then, well, these units, I don't really mind about, uh, you know, I don't really mind about them being in here. So we'll just do this, this, this. And then we will just wait here for some time and try and restore myself because, of course, Yamira and Jeremus both got themselves eliminated. Like I said, that I didn't want them to, but, you know, it happens. And we're just going to level these guys up. There we go. Ah, I should have leveled those up into crossbowmen. That was my bad. Oh, well, never mind. And I'm actually, as I've said before, not going to be leveling these guys up into Drusniks unless we are going to be doing some insanely massively disadvantaged fight on the fields of battle because if that happens then of course I would want to have cavalry at my disposal but anyway let's see what I can do about Jeremus here so let's have a look okay so he's got 10 strength so technically with 10 strength he can use a siege crossbow uh, as far as I'm aware that is the 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 uh, not the limit but the requirement for a siege crossbow in native. I'm not entirely sure if it's the same in banner page, but if it is, then he already has enough to be able to use the siege crossbow, and that's all I really want him to do. So I'm going to level up his wound treatment and first aid here, because we're actually going to start getting him, you know, a little bit of uh, medicinal skills and so on. Beheshta has leveled up as well, so we'll just get him some strength. Yes, it's the meme once again, isn't it? And uh, hopefully... Uh, wait a minute. He doesn't have any gear on? Why is he wearing a nomad vest still? Let's give him this. There we go. And we could give him these these boots too. And he's literally just using that. I don't have a shield or anything like that. And my inventory management is obviously basically nothing. So pretty difficult to get all those things uh, in my inventory right there. But oh well, never mind. How, how much is my inventory management? Uh, one. Yes, okay. That's uh, 
that's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Uh, that's not particularly good. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so we've taken Uxcar, which is perfect. This is absolutely perfect in terms of its location. Because here's the thing. It's really close to the salt mine. And it's close to Suno. And basically is great. Really fantastic. Oh, look at that. We've gained right to rule with the Saranids now as well. Making peace with the Vegeas. And uh, let me actually just take a quick look. Oh, yeah, they're actually going to try and take Axkal back, I think. But let me just take a quick look at my right to rule. My right to rule is 69. <laughs> Yes, of course it is. All right, well, let's go into the tavern here real quick because there might be a couple of people that I want to recruit because I actually wanted, if at all possible, to leave here and go and uh, make a brief stopover in Suno. But if these guys are going to besiege it, I need to move relatively fast. Yes, they are going to be besieging it. Okay, let's move quickly, quickly, quickly. Okay, so we need to go and get more Varangian guards. There we are. And then we will rush back to Uxkarl as soon as possible. What's my pathfinding like? Is it actually any good? I don't think it is. Okay, so these guys are going to run away from me because, of course, I have a much bigger combat strength than they do, pretty sure, at least. Because, let's face it, they've got, like, what, 50 units in each of their armies or something like that. So we would probably be able to defeat them relatively quickly. Anyway, there you go. They, um, they apparently lost their bottle, so to speak. And uh, they have now run away, so we don't really need to worry about them any further, which is great. But unfortunately, now we have to worry about morale instead, because, of course, having a large army is going to make our morale plummet relatively quickly. So at least Uxkar is no longer in a siege, so we will just rush over to the salt mine as soon as possible, put all these guys in the salt mine. I have 234 there now. I know that someone actually mentioned that they have uh, 700 or something like that in the salt mine. I'm just like, whoa, that's crazy. That is uh, that is just basically doing all of the work for you. You don't know, you don't need to invest in uh, <laughs> in land or anything like that. But anyway, let's see if I can. Um, what do I want to do here? I should probably invest in the land, right? I should probably invest in the land. I mean, I own nothing here, and it's going to give me 102 dinars per acre every two weeks i personally feel like that is so good because it pays you every two weeks instead of every month or something like that so i'm thinking we'll just buy 10 so that's ten thousand, and we will sell a couple of things as well because we can and i should probably read this shouldn't i because this gives me plus one charisma i should probably read that at some point let's get some honey just to help out I and mean, some grapes and some other pieces of variety for us. And how much? Uh, yeah, I've got six in charisma. That's actually awful, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty awful. Yeah, leadership is definitely going to help you a great deal in regards to morale problems. And I am actually going to have some morale problems right here because if, uh, if I don't get attacked again or if I don't do any attacking, then it is going to be a pretty big mess potentially. So I'm hopeful that that will not be the case. And I'm hopeful that uh, King Yaroglek will make his decision relatively fast. As you can see, look at Suno. Suno is just, wow, it is just crazy how much it is giving us. And bear in mind that if we do have Axkal under our control as well, then what is going to happen is our supply lines between these two places is just going to be so good. It really is going to be so good. And also bear in mind, oh, look at that. Braven has become under siege by the Nords. So what is going to happen now? Look at this. The Swadians have literally been dissected from every single angle. The Rodox came in here doing the first initial blow. Harangoth Castle, Ribulay Castle being eliminated, being captured. And then you have the Vegeas coming in from the other side, and they have punched a hole right through into Dirim, and then they've also taken Rinyar Castle, as well as a number of others. And of course, we uh, we did a little bit of little bit of something around here, a little known little known capture of Suno itself. You know, we we did pretty well there. So yeah, that is yeah a lot of drama, a lot of drama going on. And uh, oh wow, wow, wow! Look at that. The Vagiers have actually just taken Tilbo Castle from Swadia as well, which means that they literally have Praven, Teverin Castle, and Reindy Castle. That's it. That's all they have. That's all they have. So that is crazy. That is actually probably 
one of the quickest eliminations I've seen because I've only been playing for about 150. Whoa, he's actually giving this to us. Can you believe that? I actually can't believe that. I was wholeheartedly prepared to, uh, you know, defect and uh, see what we could do. But there you go. I'm, I'm going to accept that. Absolutely. Technically, what I could do is I could actually defect now. Uh, mm, could I do that, actually? Because if I go and talk to the, the, the fellow, you know, if I go and talk to, uh, what's his name? King Ragnar. If I go and talk to King Ragnar, then theoretically... I could join him and I could bring my centers over to him, but I'm not entirely sure if that actually works without you already defecting and creating your own faction, if you know what I mean. So anyway, I'm just going to increase my morale a little bit here and I'm just going to take a look at the various things here. Oh, that, uh, look at that. There's actually a heavy Great Bardiche. That's a great weapon. Yeah, I like that a lot. Anyway, let's see. Is there anything else here that I actually want to go for? Because I was thinking that I might want to buy some bolts for my units, you know, for my companions. Do they have any? Yeah, they've got one. One set of bolts. Well, this is a poor showing, isn't it? Absolutely poor showing. All right, so who could use it? Well, I guess Jeremus could use it because I kind of want him to stay at the back of the fight and uh, use his hunting crossbow. So that sounds like a good plan to me. And uh, otherwise, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go into the castle here. I think my treasurer is also here, my chamberlain, shall we say. And, uh, oh yeah, also our constable. So I'm actually going to try and enlist a patrol here. Oxcar, let's have them go over there. And then we can also withdraw some money. So I'm actually going to take out 20,000. Yeah, I know. I know. It's a lot. But you got to invest money to make money. So I'm actually going to buy 25 acres, 26,000 dinars right there. And it's going to be worth it. It is going to be worth it in the end. But uh, you just got to take that big upfront, you know, cost initially. And uh, then see what happens. But uh, where's my where's my patrol, actually? Is it here? There it is. There it is. Come on. Come on, patrol. Okay, I need you to reinforce Uxcal. Thank you very much. So that's a bunch of recruits, footmen, skirmishers, veterans, infantry, and horsemen. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. And that's it. That's basically what I'm going to do for the foreseeable future here. I'm just going to let the game run a little bit, see what I can do about maintaining the amount of money that I have, as well as, of course, managing our weekly wages. Because Uxcarl is going to be... Oh, it has just changed from average to rich, too. Uxcarl is going to be fantastic. I'm actually going to be building a guild hall here as well. It's going to take 48 days because I have zero engineering skill still, which is really grinding my gears, but it's all right. It's all right. You know, 9,000 dinars anyway. It's not, not a big deal. You know, it's not a huge cost, but the time cost is going to be more of a problem. So yeah, you know, can't really do much about it, unfortunately, because RT Mena was being a bit of a, you know, do you, want, do you want cheese with that wine? You know, he's kind of doing that, you know, so that's not exactly great. And Uxcar has now changed from rich to average, which is unfortunate because I think we're going to be getting a massive lump sum this week. And I kind of want you to see the lump sum because I'm going to be playing a little bit off screen, of course. Oh, Swadia, there you go. Swadia has lost Praven to the Nords. So I will not be taking Praven from them. And I'm actually kind of surprised that they took it so incredibly quickly. But there you go. Anyway, we are getting many, many, uh, m well, many, many kind of monetary values all over the place right here. Riverchegg is looking like, like nothing now because we are starting to invest in other places. And you can see here, Suna has 11,760 for us just waiting there. And we can go and pick it up at any time. Really quite fantastic. And of course... I want you to see the lump sum because, as I said, I'm going to be playing off screen and I don't want you to, you know, I don't want you to miss it because it is going to be a pretty large amount. So let's see how much it's actually going to be. Wow. All right. There it is. Okay. So we just gained 20, almost 22,000 from the tariffs at Uxcar and we're still gaining 12,000 from Suno. So we generally just literally gained 33,000 profit. And uh, that is exactly what we're going to continue gaining. Oh, hello! I'm being attacked by some bandits. Okay, this is great. Okay, well, I think I can. I can. I think I can de deal with these guys. These just seem to be regular bandits. Shouldn't be too bad. And 
Could you... Bunduk, come on now. I have you with me. You are my bodyguard. Oh, wow, he, he dealt with him pretty quickly. That's, that's actually quite nice. Impressive. Impressive, Mr. Bunduk, even though you were a little bit uh, slow on the uptake there. But anyway, I wanted to recruit some more uh, elites. But uh, yeah, I actually wanted to show you something. So here it is. Yeah. Can you see any Swadian, any Swadian fiefs? No, because they just took Reindy Castle very, very shortly, just, uh, just very recently. And uh, the only thing that they have left is this poor little castle in the little corner of the world right there, Teverin Castle. The Swadians have been dismantled com so completely and utterly in this episode. I can't believe it, to be honest, because it started off with the Vagiers coming in from this section. Then obviously we have the Nords coming in, taking Praven, and of course me, technically a part of the Vagiers, taking apart Suno and Axkar. So that really worked out very badly in the uh, Swadians' favor. So... Yeah, anyway, there's another little bit of money. I'm going to reinvest that in buying some more land, and uh, that's exactly how it's going to go. I'm just going to continue taking money and investing it. And uh, generally, that is the way to go. Oh, look at that, 52,000. I'm going to take 30,000 out, and I'm literally just going to go and buy 28 acres of that. And I own 66 out of the possible 77 right now, so that is great. I only have 13 dinars remaining in my in my purse, but that doesn't actually matter because I am generally gaining profit every single week, especially considering the salt mine. So we're very much set in regards to our cash, and I should then, theoretically, be able to infinitely recruit elite units over and over again. And if we were part of the Nords, this would make things very interesting indeed. And, uh, well, who knows? Maybe we will defect to them at some point. But uh, for now, that will be it for this episode. And I'm going to say, well, uh, you know, there's something happening tomorrow. And, uh, well, join me for that. I hope you will. I hope you will join me for that journey. And uh, I thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.